Load shedding claims exceed those of burglaries, God save the king, the pound in troubled water, and price action for days coming up right now. Good morning on this beautiful Friday, the 9th of September, guys. I am your host, Dane Fanamas. This is Pounds for Breakfast. In the next couple of minutes, we're going to be covering everything you need to know and so much more about the markets. Now, before we jump in, guys, just want to give everybody a massive shout out for a beautiful week in the start of our G360 live shows as well as the academy that is going to be launching extremely extremely soon now listen guys if you would like to share your story with us if you would like to be interviewed if you'd like to have your story heard please go ahead and email us and you can speak to me directly at dane at globex 360co today that link will be down in the description below over and above that guys we have a brand new chatbot that is available to speak to us through telegram as well as whatsapp so for any issues anything you need support on kyc accounts deposit withdrawals whatever you name it you can now chat to us live within business hours and our amazing team will get back to you and get you assisted Okay, beautiful. So welcome. Let's jump straight in. We have a lot to talk about today. Some beautiful news busy happening as well as some stunning price action. Hold on to your seats. It's about to get serious. Let's jump right in. So first up this morning, we're going to be speaking on a local front. Sunlam says that for the first time ever, that load shedding claims have now exceeded those of burglaries. Now, this could be due to business interruptions. This could be due to power surges. We experienced this yesterday where we had a surge in the studio. Um, just something very interesting uh, to obviously take note of that load shedding is now causing us more cost and damage than actual crime right so that's something definitely want to talk about uh there's still that 2.7 billion rand that is missing from mti international mirror trading international which was essentially a ponzi scheme right guys and this is obviously just further highlight to why you want to be trading why you want to be doing business with an fsca regulated company and you guys are exactly in the perfect place to be with globex 360. now a lot of people ask why fsca regulation guys it's there to protect you it's there to make sure that certain standards within the industry are met that certain levels of transparency and and ultimately that there is no conflict of interest against yourself as the clients now we see cases like this every single week um just obviously make sure you are protected out there but if you watch me right now you are guys if you don't have a live accounts in the link in the description down below get your accounts funded from next week we will have a specific group where all of our live broadcasts a lot of special new features will be happening only with those clients who have live accounts so you don't want to miss out you want to be a part of that jump in and get started okay as you guys all heard yesterday, uh, Queen Elizabeth has passed away. Now, her son, King Charles III, has now stepped up and is now taking her footsteps, right? Sort of filling those shoes. He's 73 and now he is leading. So God save the king and obviously condolences to all of the British people in terms of this time. There has been declared a state of mourning and uh, we can see that you know, leaders from around the world are sharing, sharing their condolences uh, with the British people in this difficult time. Okay, 
quickly having a look americans believe that home prices will fall we discussed this previously for those who've been following me for a while anytime there's a contraction or pullback in the economy uh, the housing market tends to take a little bit of a hit now i've said this for a little bit that i do think the south african market will be soon to follow we will start to see a little bit of a pullback in the rampant housing prices um, but again this is going to have a ripple effect uh, that we will come to see a little bit later uh, expanding on the story that has been continuing this week in terms of why the federal reserve wants to see a stronger dollar and falling stock prices right i'm going to share these links uh, for these particular articles down below um, and it continues the theme of what we saw we saw that um jerome powell met yesterday uh, i don't know for those of you who watched the story and the speech live but you know extremely knowledgeable individual right it's really trying to explain that they're trying to look at the data they're trying to adapt to the policy um, as and how they see fit to best manage the economy as well as a soft landing so a very very interesting live broadcast for those of you who find that type of stuff interesting uh trust the next big name uh that we're gonna have to pay quite a bit of attention to says that you know the pound sterling has a good outlook against the euro and the dollar well i'm going to show you the data in a second and it does not look to be that way we work we're running a little bit into our fundamental data timeline because it isn't too much fundamental data we're going to spend most of our timelines here on analysis because there is some power and cracking price action that we're going to jump into quickly having a look at the S&P 500 heat map uh, for yesterday we can see generally and overall the market was green for the day uh, the only real items in the red was Apple just under a uh, negative half uh, negative one percent and Google negative one percent other than that markets generally overall are doing well again uh, in line with the price action now quickly having a look at the economic calendar and what we are looking at for the day Canadian unemployment change is pretty much going to be the highlight of the day. So we're going to get some unemployment data for the Canadian dollar. So if you're trading and looking at anything Canadian dollar wise, you obviously want to be paying attention to that item right there, um, as that'll have probably one of the biggest effects on the markets. Now, guys, if you haven't so already, make sure you jump in, like and subscribe to both our YouTube channel as well as social media. Uh, there is going to be a bunch of new and very, very exciting things coming up over the next couple of days and over the space of the next week. And your feedback is extremely valuable to us so we can continue to improve on already a world-class service for every single one of you. Okay, so it's that time. Let's jump into analysis, what you've all been waiting for. Let's give it a look right now. So first and foremost, guys, we're looking at the dollar. And as I discussed yesterday, we're seeing that divergence on the dollar's top end, right? We got that divergence. Divergence looked and played out exactly as it should have. We have higher highs on the dollar index and the lower highs on the RSI. We got that pullback on the dollar. Now we can see that reflected quickly having a look first and foremost. We're going to be having a look at, I think we're going to start off this morning uh, with Euro USD. So let's quickly just quickly pop into Euro USD. As we discussed yesterday, that 75 basis point hike on the euro was definitely what the euro was looking for from a strength perspective. However, I would just like to bring your attention to the fact that we are currently hitting up against resistance and we've just rejected, we made that first rejection off of resistance. So in order for the euro to continue this rally, we would need to extend past I would say the one-to-one -one ratio, meaning one euro buying you uh, one dollar, zero cents and 85 pips. And that number is 1.0085. 1.0085, a breakout below, above that zone would definitely trigger a buy order. Now, looking at Euro GBP really quickly and just having a look at the weakness currently that the pound is busy facing, uh, the pound is right up against that resistance level. The euro is dominating the pound at this moment in time. The market structure and the price action that we're seeing here definitely shows us that euro GBP has some more room towards the top side. So we're going to be keeping quite a close eye on that one. Now, looking at USD ZAR, as I've obviously been discussing over the course of the past couple of days, is 
we might be able to start to see that pullback, right? USDZAR is perfectly positioned for a dollar index pullback that would result in USDZAR coming back down to that 61.8, giving us that ultimate buy opportunity. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about that. Now, moving into indices really quickly, we are quickly having a look at US30. Now, both US30, both NASDAQ, both German30, all three of those main indices are currently sitting right up on a price action perspective beautifully right up against that 50 fib level right so we can see that pullback happen we bounced off the 61.8 as i've discussed this week we at that 50 fib level and we now potentially in that next state to start looking to go long on uh, indices, right? All of them. We're currently looking now at NASDAQ, right sitting right against that 50 FIB level. German German 30 is still floating between the 78.6 and the 61.8, but also very, very soon about to push through resistance, um, ultimately creating some of those new highs. So the future of indices and where we're currently sitting, definitely looking like the stock markets, specifically the indice markets, is ready for that bull move, right? We might be entering into the next massive bull cycle where we could see prices shoot through the roof. So based on where markets are currently, I am super excited for next week. There's gonna be a bunch of new things which I don't wanna give away all too early, but I am super excited about next week. I think we're gonna be seeing some massive, massive things from the markets. Price action, just price action is king lining up perfectly and i think we're going to have an amazing time together next week right now moving into commodities i have added brent to the picture so some of you who uh, love trading brent you should uh, uh, have something just a little bit more to smile about this morning but first and foremost we're quickly going to have a look at where gold is currently sitting now gold is still perfectly in line with our earlier analysis in terms of currently sitting at that beautiful support level and you know really trying to figure out its footing for this next season now based on where we saw the dollar index was a couple minutes ago should we start to see that weakening of the dollar this might be an opportunity for gold to spike now remember as we've also discussed earlier this week the correlation between gold and the dollar is broken, right? Even though the price of gold is measured in the dollar, that supply demand uh, inverse and reactive relationship is broken. We have seen multiple times where the price of the dollar has gone up as well as the price of uh, um, where gold has obviously gained in strength as well as the dollar. So that, that parity and that correlation doesn't always work out. But in seasons where there's obvious change, where the dollar has to sort of reduce in strength, um, we do then see gold take advantage of that. Now, if we look at most of the articles, articles are really saying that, uh, you know, they want a stronger dollar and a weaker uh, uh, Wall Street, a weaker uh, financial uh, market in terms of uh, stocks. I think we're going to see the opposite. I think we're going to see a weaker dollar and I think we're going to see stock markets rally. But that's just my opinion. Take it or leave it. Educational purpose only. Remember. Okay. For those of you who are Brent crude traders, guys, uh, some beautiful analysis right here. We've got a beautiful market structure that is allowing us to try and find support on Brent. Now, this is currently looking at it on a one day time frame. We can see we've got very, very simple support. Um, we are, if we just look at this last bull move, we can see that this is the impulse on Brent. We can see that we've got this pullback and we are currently just below that 61.8 now i believe that that push down below the 61.8 was a bear trap now what is a bear trap a bear trap is where markets break very obvious market structure and price action right forcing people to go short meaning sell a particular position on a cfd commodity index so on and so forth now that bear trap would essentially catch people into a sell it would then break back up 
into normal market structure and basically take out everybody on the down end of that sell. Now that can also be called a liquidity grab and that is obviously also part of the market maker strategy in terms of relinquishing and creating supply within the market um, in order to sell something that's going to be willing, somebody willing to be able to buy it. So sometimes these artificial moves are created to rally up a group of sellers at a particular zone or area in this particular case below support getting people interested in short positions however because we know and understand we can utilize fibonacci a short position below a certain area um you know we would wait for that confirmation of that retest in order to take it now there's a very clear market structure available to us this is currently on a daily if we switch to an hour we can see that if brent recovers right above that 90.73 dollars per barrel breaks through resistance and sits above that 61.8 we then might be in a really great position to go long on Brent. Now quickly moving into crypto, just touching on it, guys, uh, Bitcoin is looking extremely fragile, currently sitting again, hovering right there, just below that $20,000 to a coin mark right definitely looking vulnerable this is on a daily time frame and i'm going to start to get really excited as soon as we break that 78.6 inversely we do have some price action that is starting to develop and is giving us a bit of an idea as to what's busy happening so a break above resistance might get me interested uh, but ultimately a break below support means we could make that next run to that value proposition at the thirteen thousand dollars per coin level now guys we're about to you know wrap up this week as most of you know i don't generally trade on a friday we utilize this time to plan for the next week now there's some massively exciting things coming we thank you for joining us this week uh, we have had eight or nine successful broadcasts as well as shows and again your feedback and commentary is always welcomed again if you'd like to be interviewed if you'd like to have your story heard please make sure you get in contact with me uh, as well as like and subscribe to all of our social media areas guys as always it's been a massive pleasure being able to serve um, as always g360 tv will continue to get better as we grow the globex 360 family as always guys be safe trade safe the globex 360 way until then shalom